Welcome to the English Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Omar Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. What fresh spore of madness is coming to America? <laughs> I don't know. What I do know is somebody's going to leave the office. Not the office. That show was great when it was on. Uh, the office is always great. By the way, if you have a VPN, you can watch the office in other countries. Ah, there you go. So you'll have infinite officers. <laughs> But anywho, uh, in this week's episode review, we are going to, well, jump to an old goodie. Uh, an old goodie, yet a new one. Let's just say that this is interesting, it's interesting. So in this week's episode review, we are going to review America's World, New York, United Heroes. This is a America's Ladybug special. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I, I got nothing more to add. Uh, so before we jump in, first impressions are your order. Uh, first impression is what? What? Oh, get on with it. What? I'm afraid for a good chunk of this story, I was watching it kind of curious where it would go, but mostly just feeling frustrated because they've put all the focus on the relationship. Will they, won't they? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And I got to say, I understand that that's a big part of Ladybug, but at the same time, you, you've you got this special where they're in another country meeting heroes whose powers are not miraculous based. Don't you think that deserves a bit more attention? It's one of those things where the potential is there, yet they squandered it with just... How, how would I put this? It's the same old, same old... Um, there, there's a phrase. Same shirt, different day, something like that? Take away the R in shirt and you're there. <laughs> Are you done with your opinion? Yes. My my Impressions. initial opinion. We'll yeah, get yeah. into the whole craziness. All right. So as for me, this one was interesting. They they hype it up saying that this is going to be one of those um, extravagant movies, something, blah, blah, blah. It, it was uh, going to be really awesome. The fans are going to love it. And me being one of the fans for the show, I felt that this one was just okay. I think the word was overhyped. But hey, um, that's first impressions. Uh, if you are interested and have not watched this, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. I, I hope you enjoy the movie slash special. So we start off with our heroes. Oh, well, um, with a really cool fancy intro. But yes, we, we start off the... Um, special with the pigeon guy stealing the Eiffel Tower and bringing it into space. This is the 51st try. This guy is an idiot. And also, apparently the the heroes got an upgrade when I wasn't looking. Ah, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of things that happen when you were away. <laughs> but when you find a guy for the 51st time, 51st time, uh, I have to wonder, do you need to change tactics? It's like, okay, you know, we... We saved the Eiffel Tower. Now we're going to break your thumbs. <laughs> Sorry, but you can't keep doing this. Oh, man. It, it, it's one of those things where... Goku, why did you kill that guy? Oh, who knows? He could be bad. You know, he could be a good guy soon. Like Vegeta, Piccolo, Ten, and so on. <laughs> and Yamcha. <laughs> Never forget Yamcha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, no. But, yeah... Uh, <laughs> In this case, you have to really think about it, right? Right? The evil villain, the Hawk Moth. Oh my God! Oh, um, he he corrupts people and turns them into villains. Yet this is the fifty-first time he's doing this to this poor idiot, and I'm just thinking, why don't you give up on him? He, he's just dumb. He. This is. It's like. <laughs> um, it's like the definition of insanity where doing the same thing expecting a different result yeah he's basically a loser <laughs> <laughs> yep oh god but anywho um, while this is happening we see that um, Marinette's friend Alia is live streaming the whole thing and is updating her lady blog ooh yay so after the situation is done, um, well, 
the Eiffel Tower is on the ground. Uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir defeated the bad guy. We see them in the Eiffel Tower. And Cat Noir trying to pull a smooth one over Ladybug and failing. And I'm going to pause here because there's an interesting... There's something interesting that happened here. And I want your opinion on this. So, Silva, what do you think? Well, first off, I want to know, what the heck did Ladybug do? Because, like, her Ladybug vision, it highlighted, a, a what was it, a book, a bird, and the entire Eiffel Tower. <laughs> and I'm just, and I'm just like, hang on, like, what, what did she do with all that information? Explain, Miraculous. I demand to know what her thought process was. It's one of those things where they explain how Ladybug vision work. It's it's based on the person's mental capacity of how they think. But at the same time, too, it's one of those things where... How do I even pull, say this? They're pulling stuff out of their butts. And in this one, I got no idea how you even jump to that conclusion in logic. Who knows? Who knows indeed? But either way, uh, okay, so Cat Noir really trying hard to win her over, and she is just shutting him down at every turn. I know a lot of people don't like the term friend zone. <laughs> in my eyes, it seems like an applicable term. The person's not interested in you romantically. You are a friend and nothing more. That does seem an appropriate. It's that it's when you believe that you're owed a relationship that things get really mm, dangerous and you need to back off. So Cat Noir, he is her friend, her her partner in a professional sense, but that's as far as it will go for now. Mm -hmm. If if only he knew. <laughs> so true. But did you notice Ladybug's voice? You know, it's been a while since I heard these characters' voices. Did they get a new voice actress? No. Um, a fun fact here... Um, when this was recorded, if I'm not mistaken, it was during the pandemic. So most of the VAs have to do recording at home. And in this one, from what I understand and from what uh, Master of Light told me, that uh, the voice actress for Ladybug here did the recording at home. And let's just say someone somewhere forgot to tune her voice or modulate her voice to ha to be a, at a higher pitch because that's her natural speaking tone. Hmm. Well, surprise, surprise. Oh, by the way, fun fact. Uh, the actress for Ladybug? Uh, what was her name? Give me a second. Oh, uh, God. Me good with uh, stuff name. Yes, me good. Um, Where can I find Ladybug? Oh, my God goodness this this i i hate when i have to do fact checks ah god dang it uh yeah here we go press buttons here come on wiki i i know you can okay uh christina v yeah christina v she also voiced uh it, recently she she revoiced the voice of young donald in ducktales the 2000 series ah and was she also the voice of Huey, Dewey, and Louie in the original DuckTales? I know. Uh, Christina V is a newer VA. She's, according to her wiki bio, she's just 33. And yeah, she recently did the, whatchamacallit, mm, DuckTales one. The, the one that recently came out where they were reminiscing about some pap papyrus scrolls or something like that. Ah, papyrus. Well, that's, that's strange. I seem to recall a DuckTales where we heard young Donald and he sounded like the old school Huey, Dewey, and Louie. And I wasn't sure if they got the old voice actor to take over for that. Uh, if I remember right, they were two. Uh, the original voice, the first appearance of young Donald was uh, the original, I think. And the newer one is uh, Christina here. All right. But anywho, uh, yeah, getting back on track to... Ladybug. <laughs> um, how about yeah? Um, the the voice the voice is a bit different, but you'll get used to it. Uh, at first, you 
um, for somebody who has seen the show, they'll notice it. Uh, but you didn't notice it, Silva? Mm, can't say I did. I was too busy wondering about that damn p- pigeon and the book and the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh. And okay, they've got wings now. They can fly. When did when did this happen? Okay. Uh, I don't remember the wing part, but I do remember other things. Like, um, if you notice, uh, they ate a some what for Cat Noir it was cheese for Mar- uh, for Ladybug it was macaroons and those give them powers. Uh, just imagine Mega Man. Yeah. Don't remember Mega Man eating cheese, although he did eat a lot of yellow pellets. <laughs> I thought that was Pac Man. He doesn't have the market cornered on consumables. <laughs> so true. <laughs> but getting back on track, getting back on track. After all this is done, and Ladybug friend zoned Cat Noir, we see that Marinette here, or yeah, we, we see that Marinette is going to school, and she's kind of quote unquote over Adrian. Because Adrian is uh, the boy he likes, but doesn't seem to go anywhere with this. And yeah, so she, she goes to school, uh, proclaiming that Adrian is my friend. Uh, she, she is a friend I, I really, really like, but we are just friends. Good friends. Good, good friends. It, it's a one-way relationship. I, I'm working on it. <laughs> so we head to school, and God dang it, what, what, what the hell is this, Silver? Oh, the oh, the introduction, the video with the sock puppets. Oh boy, Th- this was a this was a really sore point for me. <laughs> Please, okay, um, you're American, you're closer to this. For me, this was like, what the hell is this crap? Like, oh god, oh my god, that's just, oh god. You wonder what would be great, like, if they if they dare to do what MLP did. <sighs> What, the little kind of, kind of pointy things? Oh, no. Remember the puppets? <laughs> the one with Discord? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, where Discord was about to throw throw a tree hugger into the vortex. Yeah. If, if they did something like that, that would be strange yet fascinating. But, oh, God. This was just, oh, my God. Uh, so, this was a sore point. Do explain, Silver. Oh, well, I'm afraid I have to get a little political because here in America, we're coming off four years of where some of the worst people f- felt empowered, where they felt they could they could be a, as cruel and insulting and supremacist, white supremacist, as they felt. Basically, they thought, well, Trump's in the White House, we're in charge. When this cartoon has this really oversimplified, oh, President George Washington and, uh, oh, forgive me, people of Fran- France, uh, this young this young ruler who participated in the revolution, apparently. They said, they believe that, oh, freedom shouldn't have any borders. And they're hugging it out, and that's it. And I think, uh-huh, <laughs> well, maybe without borders, but what about based on the color of your skin, huh? There's a sticky point in our history, isn't it? Yep. Just going to gloss that over? Huh? Going to ignore it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This maybe ties into the larger thing with Ladybug. I mean, when you look at uh, Marinette's class, all these diverse individuals, even the way they're all sitting is uniquely character-specific. And that's actually a positive. But I started to, I had talked to my friends about this. Uh, you have all these kids from different walks of life. But how often does that really come up? I mean, uh, Marinette's best friend. She's Indian ancestry. But as far as I know, born in France. In the show, have, have they ever addressed that? Have they ever talked about her own cultural heritage? You know, in, in all of my watch for Ladybug, I, I never, I, I don't think they touch upon their race is uh, if I'm wrong uh, please do correct me in the comments below but as far as I can tell it's just basically hey this is Alia Alia is this character who runs a ladybug blog and so on nothing to do with their race 
And I'm of two minds on that. And this ties into the whole George Washington, oh, America is all about freedom thing. On the one hand, I feel like if you if you if you can interchange someone's race, ethnicity uh, very easily, then really it feels more like a token gesture rather than anything concrete. That's what I at the same time, and this is what my friends pointed out uh, to while I was talking with them last night. Here in America, we're pretty much the only country that seems to really get hung up on ethnic background. It's not you're not just an American. Oh, you're you're Irish ancestry or or British or French, Indian, Japanese. We we are always looking outside our country's history to identify people. Then you wonder, well, maybe it maybe my issue reflects more on my own culture than it does on their presentation. I'm not really sure, but I do know that his history is itself a narrative and they're presenting a very oversimplified, really low ch perception challenge uh, image of American and French history. It's one of those things where I feel like certain countries operate in certain ways or uh, like they try to tell a certain story. Like it feels like Ladybug... In the in case of Ladybug, it's just okay. This character is just a token character. Um, a good example is Alia. Alia, is, like you mentioned before, Alia is um, is have Indian descent, but it's interchangeable. But I do see other shows, probably Western shows, where certain characters of certain ethnicity do have their role, do play their part. But at the same time, too, I do feel like it's just a token gesture. In which case, it can actually feel frustrating when you, when a character is being, well, a check mark on a list. Yeah, I mean, I feel that with quote unquote modern cartoons, like this person here is this because we need to check the blank mark because we need to get that demographic on with the show. There's also a question. This is meant to air after the most recent season of Miraculous, yes? I think so, yeah. So, Chloe was a superheroine, but she got kicked out? Yeah, because she spilled the beans like Iron Man. So, uh, it's kind of weird that she, that's really unaddressed in this. Uh, yeah, in, in <laughs> this is one of those cases where the movie, quote-unquote, fails because it doesn't really address those kind of things, yet it succeeds because the fan base for the show already knows. So it's one of those Catch-22 things where why would you want to address the things that your fans already know? Yet, if we get audience like you, Silver, who just knows bits and pieces, they would want to know what, what, why, why is Chloe not part of the crew? What did she do? Kind of thing. And also with Alia, uh, Neo, and so on. In my case, I'm just like, wouldn't that have some sort of emotional impact? Wouldn't she still be angry at, at well, taking her anger out on others? Uh, just seems like Chloe is a is a very big non event in this in this uh in this special, bit. which to be honest, I'm not terribly broken up over <laughs> as she's usually just unlikable. Yeah, but here's the thing, Silver. Um they do address some of her anger in the uh series. And she she is kind of angry at the fact that Ladybug doesn't or Ladybug doesn't want to give her the miraculous the bee miraculous because uh, she's really good at it, blah, 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 and so on. But for this, they, they addressed everything there, and it's kind of a really nice revelation and a nice story, but I forgot which episode. If we really want to do it, we could have done the whole review on it, blah, 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 so on. But anyway, let's continue on. So with the Freakishly Puppet Show done, and they won, uh, I'm going to fist pop for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> if they won, what were the other entries? Non-existent. The, hist the, the history of France and America's relationship as expressed through soup. <laughs> or dry paint. Mm. So, anywho, they, they won. 
And they get to, and the whole class gets to go to New York. Yay, much fun. Uh, Chloe doesn't want to go because she's a snob. And Adrian wants to go, but his dad won't let him go. So before they could go, um, their teacher, Miss Bourgeois, was it? If I remember right. But anyway, um, she can't go because she's expecting. What? <laughs> it's a miss? Mrs. So she's I, I, I don't know. I don't know, Super. She's one of those characters where I don't understand. Oh, I don't know what's going on with her. Oh man, but yeah, um, she she uh, I'm just trying to find her if I can find. Oh man, yeah, um, she she from what I understand is expecting a baby, and she she can't go because well she's expecting so he she she can't go. Oh god, I'm so confused, so so confused. Let's see here. Let's see here. I don't think it's her name is Bourgeois because I'm looking at the uh, miraculous. Oh, sorry, that's Chloe Bourgeois. Something. Yeah, I think so. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I'll just do a little searchy search. Yeah. Okay. Well, while well, you do that, I, I, I'll continue on. Oh God. So uh, the, the the teacher is expecting, so she can go. So they sub in with the boring teacher. The boring teacher hears this and felt hurt. I feel like a Nakuma's coming. Yeah. So let's wait for that revelation to happen. Yeah. Teacher doing her job. Student hating on her. A bound Nakuma's coming going to going to come. Yeah. So anywho, uh where when they talk about this, uh, Adrian says that oh, I, I can't go because my dad won't let me. And there's this other girl, I forgot her name, probably Snooty person Snooty says that oh I'm not going to New York too, so we both can hang out. Wouldn't that be great, Adrian? And Marinette hears this and says, No, I am going to force you to come to the States with us. I will go up to your dad and tell him one for. So she does and she gives a speech to Adrian's dad. And somehow Adrian's dad says, yeah, Adrian can go. So yay, that's awesome. While Adrian dad agrees to this, um, we see that he has alternative plans or alternative reasoning to allow Adrian to head to New York because that would give him an opportunity to head to New York too. I don't know. Uh, Well, let's see. Um, Yes. I'm going to skip a bit because stuff here is getting bored. So anyway, um, uh, as Marinette goes back home, uh, Tiki, her fairy friend, asks her, if you're going to New York, who's going to take care of Paris? And Marinette says, oh, no problem. I have a plan B. So she goes meet up with Cat Noir and tells her or tells him that uh, I'm going to be away for a bit and I need you to take care of Paris while I'm gone. If things are a bit too difficult for you, you can reach me with the bat signal. Yes. And with that, yay! Ladybug is squad free. She can go to the States. Yay! So, the next day, Adrian, that tells Adrian that, yo, you can go to New York. And Adrian at first didn't want to go because he already promised Ladybug that he'll protect Paris. But Adrian's little fairy friend, a uh, plague, tells him that, yeah, you can go, no problem. I mean, if thing goes wrong... You can just teleport back home with your flight suit and whatnot, and things will be okay. So with that, they head to the airport and travel to New York. And I'm going to pause here. So Silva, what do you think? One one thing we glossed over: Adrian suddenly has like several girls pining for him. 
There's this redheaded girl uh, who's something about charity work. <laughs> yeah, she she's a she's a poser. Okay, so I was wondering if with this school I can never tell if that's if that's the truth or not. But so this girl's basically a big liar. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, and then there's this really sundere type uh, or robotic type fencer who just is like it's not fun to beat you if you're if your heart is distracted. Uh, yeah. Commencing empathy subroutines one seven one one nine three. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but um, Kagami, if I remember right, she, he, ah, man, that, that storyline there, uh, man, it goes some places, but it's one of those. How would I put this? You already can kind of tell that this show revolves around Marinette and Adrian's quote unquote relationship trying to get them together and why not will they or will they not kind of thing and this is just one of those scripted things that hey this happens so what do you think yeah, yeah, yeah. i will just put in some distractions so you can uh get more ships yeah right 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 no no and if you're really just like end it <laughs> Everyone else seems to have hooked up and found a partner. Yeah. <laughs> we get that in the plane scene. I, I think I should just move on. Like, is, do, you, do you want to touch upon anything before we head on? I, I will say it is kind of funny. Okay, Marinette is actually getting a little creepy. <laughs> uh, she's like, oh, yeah, it's not like I, I've stopped marathoning his, record, his cologne recordings or I've stopped bathing my pillow in his scent. It's like, Okay, this is going beyond teen romance and more into it puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> That's just creepy. Yeah, so is she. I'm just like, Barrett, you, you, you've got a problem. This goes beyond teen romance. I, I believe you will become a legit stalker <laughs> at this point. Yep. Oh, man. The, the, uh, I, I, uh, th- there is so much to talk about with this one. But yeah. Yeah, Marinette is just broken. But anywho, talking about broken, uh, we head to New York we, in the plane. Uh, that's what, a t- 10 hour flight probably? So we get to see the reaction between Marinette and Adrian in the plane, in a big metal tube. Oh no, Mar- Marinette is tr- so much trying not to hook up with Adrian because he's a friend and friends don't do that. And I'm just going to skip to the good parts because this is just slapstick. Like, it's not even good slapstick. It's like cringe. And it's not even the good kind of cringe. It does. After a while, you're just like, oh my God, somebody do. I need to see a superhero fight. Yeah. Bring on the superhero fight. And we get a superhero fight. So we, we see that uh, they, they arrive in the US airspace. And we, we see that there is a villain techno pirate it has to be cousin with techno viking is there a techno viking oh you you forgot the meme i think i did ah you you should really check that meme out it's really fun Uh, it's a really old one too classic really classic but anywho uh techno pirate here tries to steal the turbine from a plane (laughs) while it's in mid-air um (laughs) what this is just insane. <laughs> so we, we see the American superhero. Um, what's their name? Oh man, I, I am really out of this. What is their name, by the way? You remember Silva? Well, let's see here. First, we get Uncanny Valley, which is a really weird name, but it's kind of fitting. And then what was it? Sparrow and uh, Nighthawk? Yep, uh, no, I, I got their name here. All right, so uh, let's see. We are introduced to Uncanny Valley. The Superman equivalent is uh, Majestia. So Majestia here is literally the quote-unquote Superman archetype. And then um, Aeon here is, or Uncanny Valley here is the Vision. I, I think that's a proper phrase for her. Uh-huh. And I, I think these are the two that we see first, or is there more? Night Owl and Sparrow. Yeah. They, they show. Um, 
not aware of any others at the moment. But basically, okay, uh, Marinette's friend who runs the blog, which he, which he says, Techno Pirate, he's the technology thief who steals technology. I'm sorry, were we in an episode of Speed Racer and I didn't realize? <laughs> exposition. See, we have in MLP, there's the Exposition Express. And in Mer- in Ladybug, there's the Exposition Airlines. <laughs> well, but this is an explanation, girl. It's like it's her it's her prime service. She just exp- explains all this. Don't don't superhero explain me. Thank you very much. <laughs> it, it's more the redundancy of her statement. Wow, you're saying a pirate steals things? Gosh, I would never have known a pirate steals things. Thank you for explaining this to me. What is wrong with you? Uh, yeah, but... <laughs> I don't know, it's dumb. But anywho, um, we, we see that the plane is safe because uh, Uncanny Valley welded the turbine back to the plane. That's not how it works. I did wonder. It's like, wait, what about all the connections? Uh, that's what I was wondering. No, that, you know what? This is just a show, and I should just relax in. Yep. Yep. Anywho, carrying on, they land safely in New York and get on the tour bus, and Alia and Neo kind of want to hook Adrian and and (coughs) Marianne up. So they try their best, and we'll see what happens. So Uncanny Valley and Sparrow group up and make sure the uh, French arrivals are safe. So they gather around in the lobby and the boring teacher groups them up and sends them to the room and sends them to bed. And I'm here wondering, what the hell kind of teacher is this? And what time is it to send them to bed? Well, they were watching Dawn, which means that... But if the sun is still setting, then uh, I'm assuming they were they were still traveling all the live long day. Could it be sunset? They watched dawn on the they watched dawn on the day, but then they're taking the bus and the the sun is still rising. It's still shining through the city in early early dawn. So maybe they got there so early in the morning that they uh, that they're going to bed because it's still far too early in the day. I, I'm trying to think if this could be a sunset. That's why when they arrive, it's late. Could it be that way, Silver? It could. Don't know what they were doing on the bus, but it could. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is New York. So, uh, JFK, right? So, from JFK to Midtown, that's going to, what, take you a few hours, including jams and whatnot? Yes. Honestly, I last time I was in New York, we did just a lot of walking. <laughs> oh. I mean, honestly, a bus tour sounds like a terrible way to see the city because you're just stuck in traffic yeah, true, most of the time. True, true. But anywho, let's continue on. If not, we are going to be stuck here for a while. Also, I got a, I got a charger, Norman. Wait, well, what did I do? You did the true, true. <laughs> oh, okay. that's on you, you. <laughs> all right, all right. <clears throat> Oh, now you did all right, all right. <laughs> you, just, you just keep doing these I things. Know, I know. <laughs> Why you do these? Because it's funny. Anyway. So, anywho, uh, as the group meets up, uh, they're sent to the room. But I'm just going to point out a few things. There's this one uh, guy who's hitting on Chloe's friend. I forgot her name. Uh, not an important person. Uh, she kind of blushes. And, yeah, it seems like... She, in America, people like her, and she has self worth. I think so. And Chloe treats her like trash. Yep. Moving on, uh, as they discover that they share a room and lights out, they snuck to the roof party, and they have a lot of fun. Yay! And here we are introduced to the dumbest superhero. Uh, okay, this is this is open for debate, but. We are introduced to Hard Dog Man. <laughs> well, we were set, we were also interested introduced to uh, Stoplight Man, but he never was seen on screen. Itch. The premise. It, this seems like a joke at about American comics. How we have so many, many, many superheroes now. 
It's like the country is almost overripe with them. Eh, true. I mean, Marvel and DC and more comics have quote unquote more heroes, but most of the, you know what, the parody there makes sense, but uh, yeah, you know what, I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah, let's talk about this guy. This guy looks similar to Deadpool in a sense, but he sells hot dogs and this they're magical hot dogs because once you eat them, special things happen to you like flying or floating and that can't be safe. Oh, it's not. He, his mortal enemy is FDA man type guy. <laughs> You mean um, FDA, yeah, FDA, if, <laughs> the FDA, and also PETA. P- PETA's there too. All that stuff, yeah. so. <laughs> also, the what, uh, health inspector guy? <laughs> oh, that's a health inspector type person. They went PC. Yep. So, uh, as they float up in the air, which is Adrian and Marinette, they they do a slow dance because yeah why not? I I mean they're not gonna plummet through their doom. It's all good. Well, other people's skin glows. You're like, is this normal? Yeah, I I mean this, <laughs> Mister FDA guy, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> but anywho, the next day we take a tour to the museum. I got no idea what museum is this, but I, I think it's a national landmark, eh, yeah, Silver? Let's see here. I don't think it's the Smithsonian. No, I don't think so. But they go to a museum, and over there, they take a tour of the exhibition, which is going to be the French-American friendship thingy. Oh, also, we are introduced to Mr. Dorman. And yeah, it, it seems that in the Americas, nobody has a secret identity. I think they are all registered. Hmm, that can't be good. Oh, great. Tony Stark won the Civil War. <laughs> <clears throat> but anywho, I'm going to pause here for a bit. So, Silver, what do you think? Okay, when when the young man goes to fetch Chloe's t- toady, and welcome her. He looks so creepy staring at her while well, halfway through her window. <laughs> yep. And I think it's because I took a close look. His eyes, they don't have that little light spot. I thought, oh, is he a disguised villain? Is, is he the next threat? Maybe he'll be the next to be akumatized? Nope. Nothing comes of this. There's so much being set up, so much that could happen in this. And it's not happening because... We keep coming back to will they, won't they, will they, won't they. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm going to say, while I understand, again, it is a dynamic of this show. I can respect that, if not always celebrate it. Uh, Now it's actually taking time away from other plot points. Rather, in my eyes, important plot points. So, not okay. Not okay. I've, I've like, get on with it. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it! Yeah, I do agree with you on that one, man. Because the the whole thing between them, like, okay, they want to hook up, but both Marinette is trying to move away and move on, yet Adrian is a dumb block of meat. I won't say that. That's just too mean. He, he's just oblivious to the fact that Marinette likes him. Yeah, that's much better. <clears throat> He's, he's got several girls crushing on him. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, he seems totally oblivious. But anywho, um, anything more to add, Silver? Well, let's see here. I mean, demonic hot dogs making you glow or breathe rainbows. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. No, nope, not a whole lot else to talk about. Although, isn't it just... Okay, I forget if we've checked in with Hawk Moth. <laughs> beware the evil hawk moth once again but his working theory is that the american revolution and the french uh, support of that was all the result of a miraculous isn't that taking a bit of a, a dump on an actual historical figure oh yeah no there was nothing really about them it's just that they had a, a magical charm 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is the um, this is one of those things where uh, how, how do I even approach this? Because to me, it's kind of interesting that hey, set history is because of this item. Yay, that's very interesting and fun theory crafting. Oh, yay. But in terms of a historical standpoint, it's very insulting. And I'm in... It's hard for me to explain and talk about because it's not my country that's affected. So I, I can't really get... I, I, I'm not biased and I... I, how do I put this? I don't have a stake in it. So that's my view on the matter. What about you, Silver? I mean, you, it's, you, this is hitting close to home. Well, okay. Washington, I've learned that he didn't even want to be president. There's something. Mm. But I have less trouble with that. I'm actually thinking more of, is this a is this a diss against the French uh French historical figure as well he was the one who supposedly had the miraculous it's all just wow this is an interesting take but I wonder how if the French feel anything about this and I also shouldn't be like oh I'll be offended for you yeah no we've got enough of that thank you very much <laughs> I, I don't know I mean it feel, it's an interesting plot line in universe but outside of that I don't know then again, I am coming off uh, X Men: Days of Future Past. Oh, JFK was a mutant. That's why he was shot. <laughs> really? Wow! Wow! Really? Wow! Yeah, yeah. Did any of you learn any history? <laughs> There's a weird moment where history becomes secondary to entertainment. I don't know. I, I think it's that line that they cross. Where is this okay? Is this not okay? Is this line okay to cross? Yes, no. I mean... Oh, we have not yet hit that uh, line. Oh, I'm going to have words. <laughs> but at, at the same time, too, Silver, Um, uh, this is for political or historical figure. What about entertainment? I remember Elvis in Men in Black. They say that, oh, Elvis, uh, he's dead. Oh, no, he just went home because he's an alien. Oh, that, I think, is making fun of the conspiracy theories really? no. around Elvis Entertainer. A lot of people believe Elvis didn't die, that he faked, and that he's still out there. Or that there's more to Elvis than meets the eye. That basically, in a way, it's, a, it's affirming all these crazy conspiracy theories surrounding these characters. But yes, I think anyone who really cared about Elvis would feel like, hey, don't, don't co-opt him just for your movie mm, all right it's one of those yeah i understand, I understand. but anywho uh let's carry on so it seems that alia neo and the two other girls want to hook them up uh, i mean meredith and adrian so they do they try and they ask them to go to do a task in a close-up section of the museum. Okay, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. While that's happening, or before that happened, we see that Hakumov is in talks with the Techno Pirate. And he akumatizes him and he becomes Techno Pirate Magic Edition. Yay. Electric Buggaloo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he breaks into the museum where... His task was to steal the saber. And she... Yeah, Adrian and Marianne are trapped there. And yeah, this is where things start to falter. So it seems that the bad guys there, the two heroes transform, and the museum is in peril. So I'm just going to skip a lot of stuff here because blah, blah, blah doesn't really matter because the whole plan was for Hawkmoth to go in and steal the uh, brace, no brace, the necklace, the uh, eagle talon necklace. So once 
the Techno Pirate is beat up and escapes to the roof. Uh, we see that, yeah, he's cornered by the four heroes. And I probably am skipping a lot here because reasons. Ladybug is pissed off with Cat Noir because, well, he thought that she entrusted him to stay in Paris so he can take all, take care of Paris and call her for help if need be. But no, she's, he's in New York now and with that, Ladybug lose the trust of Cat Noir and they get into a lot of trouble. And I'm going to pause here before we go to the heartbreaking moment. Oh, So, I, I, I'm i going to go first, Silver, if you don't mind. You have at it. We, we see that the heroes here, the, 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 what, the, the, the junior, the, the sidekicks, wants to gain independence like Ladybug and Cat Noir, saying that, oh, they're awesome, they're great, look at the teamwork. But the French heroes are not doing a good job of representing that. But it seems that they're trying so hard to get the point across that Cat Noir screwed up and they want him to kind of mess things up even further by colliding with Uncanny Valley and destroying her with his uh, cataclysm. Which, why did he activate it, it there? It doesn't make sense for him to do so. Like, what's the game plan there? <sighs> and Ladybug being pissed off. Okay, that's understandable because Cat she gave Cat Noir a task and she he didn't do it. And at the same time, too, Paris is being attacked by a monster. So, yeah, he screwed up on all fronts. What do you think, man? Well, I don't know if Ladybug is in a position to... Uh to criticize i mean here's the thing basically all the assembled team the, the french superheroes are all her classmates and as such so she's basically arranged for every hero to be out of of the country she's never really worried about it she just hawked it off on her so-called partner so i'm while well, adrian did mess up and honestly it's plague what was gave him some terrible advice I find I find it a little disingenuous that Ladybug isn't like, oh, I shouldn't have come myself. I shouldn't have uh, left this city unprotected, especially when I'm the one who has the healing charm. I'm guessing that you're, you're remembering certain characters like Arlia and Neo becoming uh, certain heroes, including Chloe. Um, yeah, that that is a. Terrible face safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, too, um, Ladybug did expect Cat Noir to be in Paris. And if he is in trouble, he could just call Ladybug to head to Paris. And at the same time, too, uh, she didn't even tell Cat Noir where she's going. So that's one of those scenarios where Cat Noir just thought, hey, um, she's probably going to England. England's close to Paris. Yay. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those scenarios where everybody here is at fault. Especially Ladybug that doesn't have a plan B. But uh, you, you were saying, Silver? I gotta call Baloney on their bicycle tire. Uh, ah, yes. Tire that. pump. I mean, it's like, oh, I could fix. How are we going to use this to defeat the bad guy? Oh, here, let me just throw this up and it'll fix all the damage in New York. Wait, why is it a bicycle wrench or pump or whatever then? That, why not just... A, it makes no sense. That's the that's thing, because I think it's just a random item. Like, if the situation doesn't call for it, and if Marinette can't see a connection, it's just a random item. Like, oh man, this... Did we review the one where they switch places? Yes, and I was thinking of that as I saw this scene. It's like, oh, you have to be smart to know this. Well, if it just magically fixes everything, then no, there's no intelligence involved. It, yeah, I, I got no defense this, because I got no idea how it works. This is complete and utter baloney. 
at the same time too, I think we don't really understand how it really works. That's why we're... Because it doesn't work! <laughs> I, I agree, yet playing devil advocate here, I feel like we don't really understand how it works and that's why we're frustrated by the miraculous item that it gives because if we can see the connections which i which in this episode does give a really logical explanation for it but uh, man when we get there we'll talk about it and i want to know your opinion on said item but in this one yeah this is just uh, this one's just bad this one's just bad so anything more to add Silver? sorry just that we get the sewer level, which is a must in any in any uh, New York adventure, apparently. Oh, yeah, but before that, we see that, yeah, um, Techno Pirate here is quote-unquote defeated, but escaped with Hawk Moth. Uh, what else? Um, after Ladybug uses her Miraculous to, ins- <laughs> to reset the world, uh, everything's okay. And the superheroes of New York ask the French superheroes to uh, go into their civilian identity and give their morphers until they leave Par- and until they leave New York. They say no and they escape through the sewers. Now, <clears throat> this PT fest here goes a bit long, and we get an explanation of. Why don't Ladybug goes to Paris and fix everything up? I don't know, because in order to do that, she needs to find or she needs to activate the miraculous Ladybug thingy to get a specific item for the certain situation. In this case, she's too late, the monster's gone, and the damage is permanent. Okay, that's some lore we didn't know before. That's interesting. Hey, now we know. So, which again makes me makes me wonder why she felt so calm about leaving. Eh, because she expected Cat Noir to be there, and if anything goes wrong, he call her to come to Paris to yeah mitigate things. But it, it's all based on this one plan where if he's gone, what happened? Like just imagine if his civilian identity is dead. No plan B, eh? Yep. No plan B. <laughs> so she feels like she failed and Cat Noir feels like he's responsible for this and he takes off the ring and leaves. And Ladybug feels really, really bad. So, yay, gonna skip forward. Um, we see that um uh, Aggress, Mr. Aggress. Oh man, what, what's Adrian's dad's name? I forgot. You remember Silva? Whitey McWhiterton. <laughs> no Whitey McWhiterton. Yeah, that sounds good. Oh yeah, great Gabriel. Yeah, Gabe. So Gabe here act, um, activates or finds out the um, necklace is really a miraculous that holds the eagle Kwame or eagle fairy. So we, so he has plans, evil, evil plans. So we we see that the parents of the two younglings are well. Uh, remember when I mentioned before that hey, we let's insert trope characters here because they are, um, what's the word? Key, key not key figures, but just coin something. What would it, what was what you use silver? Diversity check marks. Yeah, that and also some something else. Yeah, but yay, we got a lesbian couple. Yay! I don't know how to feel about this. Like, what do you think, silver, about this one? I got no problem with the lesbian couple. I mean, jeez, people ship Batman and Superman. True. Because they're always arguing with each other. So, no, I don't have a problem with them being a lesbian couple. I I do have a problem, however, with the fact that they're just, I'm like, who are these people? Oh, oh, okay. She's talking like they're superheroes. She must be a uh, night owl. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that must be Supergirl. Oh, 
though, given given this the width of her shoulders, that must be one hell of a lot of padding in her suit or an armor. But here's the thing: uh, I feel like this is just a trope insert here because oh, what's popular? Um, lesbian mom couple thingy. Yeah, that, that's the in thing now. Look at Steven Universe. Steven Universe is popular because of that. Why not insert that there now? That'll sure get the demographic on with us. Get jiggy with it. Na na na. Phenomena. It feels like it's disingenuous. You know what I mean? Because these characters aren't shown very often and they don't interact with the cast very much, they are there to be defined by that one trait that they are a lesbian couple who also happen to be superheroes. And that's it. And there's not a lot of time to appreciate them just as characters or to have them uh, interact with our heroes beyond that one conflict. Here's the thing. We're about to enter a phase where they really talk about what it means to be a hero. And honestly, I feel like this could have been a central premise of the entire story. Uh, Cat Noir and Ladybug don't get a lot of mentorship. It would be something to see them interact with uh, more mature, more established heroes and to realize their strengths and faults as a result. But they don't because we spent so much time on the will they won't they subplot. And I did, yeah, I, I totally agree on that one, man. Like the whole I the, the whole setup for the movie here is how it was. Okay, uh, remember in let, let's go for Pokemon to <laughs> Pokemon Mewtwo the, the first movie. What was it? Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Back. Uh-huh. Okay, what was the what was the whole underlying? plot for that movie was Mewtwo's really really goth and wants to battle that and also equality and stuff like I'm a clone and clones are better than the original let's prove it this way but no the power of friendship and stuff ah that there was the underlying message that was told like we see that yeah, the trainers and the Pokemons are bonded by friendship. I could be talking out of my butt here, but that's what I think. So, in this one here, the whole setup was, will Marinette and Adrian hook up? The underlying story here, will Adrian and Marinette hook up? There's no other subplot story and whatnot, and it feels like a lot of things being cut and whatnot. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you, Silver. Uh, miss, opportunity, miss opportunity to get Marionette or Cat Noir mentor figures. And uh, technically, they do have one with Master Lee. Remember the old guy? Actually, I don't. I don't think I've seen him. Oh, you, you've seen him, the Chinese guy. See, I don't remember him in any previous episodes. I, I More to follow on that, yeah. but... Uh, but, but anywho, uh, he's irrelevant because he lost his memory. <laughs> ah, curses. Uh, but, but anywho, um, carrying on to New York, um, the two super moms scold the crap out of the two young ones and say that they're not allowed to be superheroes and I'm very mad at you. Ah, and bad girl here is really goth because look at her eyeliner. God dang it, that's a lot of eyeliner. Well, the super the superwoman, uh, was it, majestic. I think so. She's got she's really heavy on the eyeshadow. Really? Oh yeah, it's like purple. No, that's because of her sunglasses. I think it was eyeshadow. You know what character designs apart? Uh, they they get chewed off and then, uh, they go to a what you call press conference? Yes, and all the superheroes are. They're telling the um, villains that they telling the people of the United States that they are in safe hands because we will try and catch Techno Pirate and yay, we will do our jobs. Yay, yay. And with that, the President of the United States transformed into a superhero. What? Yeah, I was a little surprised by that. I was like, wait, the, the, is this the President of the United States? Is this a different President, no, she's got access to the nuclear arsenal. Okay. It's not only that. Like, 
she's a superhero and okay <laughs> this is one of those scenarios where okay they're inserting another check mark oh a female president and a black female president it's it's like a here have this one off character that doesn't really paste yeah no here you go what was the word you mentioned before it was a really good one i forgot but anyway uh check mark uh token token character ah uh, token okay yeah. but still uh we, yay, the, the superheroes including the President of the United States <laughs> Secret Service is going to have a hell of a time It's like, ma'am, we really can't protect you or intercept the bullets if you keep running around like this You know what? Okay, okay, I, I gotta ask Silver what, what do you think Marvel Universe, by the way what, what do you think if Captain America was the President of the United States well, I think he'd be he'd be old fashioned. He'd I think he'd come into conflict a lot with some of the modern nuances of politics. Funny thing is that as a hero and a soldier he gets to be a very direct approach. Politics often requires a, a much more nuanced uh tactic. I don't think he'd enjoy it. That's why he never got involved in the political argument over superheroes and said left that to Tony Stark. Which in hindsight was a mistake. All right, but still, it will be really interesting if he did. But still, um, your point is valid. So, anywho, carrying on, uh, we see that Hawkmoth here, uh, has Techno Pirate's butterfly and changes him back into Techno Pirate magic, and gives him the fairy to change him into Techno Pirate Eagle. Yes. Kaka kaka. So. While this is going on, the news is happening. Uh, it seems that because of the museum incident, uh, Gabe here asks Adrian to go back home because it's not safe there. Oh no, so he has to well, head back home. Alia tells uh, Marinette, what do you really want? Do you want him to stay or not? And yay, she wants to because she loves him. Ah. Yeah. I bathe in your cologne every night. So she fails and we go see Techno Pirate Eagle saying that he wants to give up and the American superheroes well kind of fail because how do I put this? They fail because he is magic, yeah. So he's Kwame or his fairy his ability is to unlock their full potential but with Techno Pirate here he's diverting their potential into even worse traits of themselves like with Supergirl here uh, usually she controls her full power because she doesn't want to destroy the city or cause chaos so by unlocking her safety she has no restrictions on using her full powers. Uh, with Batman here, uh, because of uh, his code, he won't well kill, and now now he will stuff, and it, it goes on and on and on. So with that, we we get to see the heroes being selfish and idiots. Yeah, <laughs> what the hell? So. Should I carry on or should I pause here, Silva? Oh, please pause here because this is where I have words. Ah, all righty then. So, um, superheroes becoming idiots. Pause here. What do you think? Well, okay. Honestly, in the superhero department, you think, oh, I can take away the block things that are blocking your true potential. Well, sometimes those blocks are in there for a reason. I actually like this angle on heroes that if you take away some sort of morality or, or limits on ambition, they stop being heroes. Uh, funny enough, Batman the Animated Series did this when Batman lost the ability to feel fear. He lost a lot of moral checks and was even willing to kill uh, without Robin to keep him in check. How did he lose that fear? The uh, 
the scarecrow gassed him with an anti-fear toxin, sort of going the opposite route of his usual MO. He wanted to prove how much we rely on fear as a natural check on impulse and, uh, well, our more selfish aspects. Oh, that's a really good episode. <laughs> it is, and it's from the... Uh, it's from when Batman was redesigned oh, to match the Superman, the enemy. That series. one, yeah, the, the strange one that I thought was really strange. <laughs> okay. So it may not get as much respect because of that. But here's the thing. When Majestic is testing out all her powers and she throws several buildings in New York and it hits me that I'm going to be talking about a tragedy from almost 20 oh, years God. ago now. <laughs> but I can't let this go. I I remember where I was the day of 9-11. I remember what I was going to do that day. I remember turning on the t- turn on my computer to check the news and then calling my roommates into the TV to, to show what had happened and because I couldn't believe it myself. The fact that Miraculous would make this joke is so tone deaf and honestly again I, I i find myself questioning where i stand on things 20 years ago for some people that tragedy is a, a history point and nothing more they might not have even been alive uh to witness it that is true but to have that that joke really feels disrespectful to the entire city and to America. I can't believe they did that. I can't believe no one raised a red flag. But at the same time, too, Silver, just to come to your argument here, more comic books, uh, superhero movies and whatnot do, do the same, especially DC superheroes. Like, they destroy a city block. They, they fight and clash into buildings, destroying buildings. So... They do... And it's presented as tragedy. It's presented to increase the horror or the the danger. And, you know, uh, after watching uh, Man of Steel, a friend of mine said, you know, we've gotten really good at rendering cities being destroyed because of 9-11, because of that very real-life footage. And to be honest, I really don't like uh, Man of Steel for that reason, that they are so casually ripping apart a city. So, believe me, a Miraculous Ladybug is not alone in, or in this critique. Uh, that everyone's do that a lot of people do this, and honestly, they seem to do it for cheap entertainment or, or cheap shock value, and it's really troubling, bordering on disgusting. So here's Ladybug now doing it for a joke. To be silly and flippant and tra-la. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, no. No, okay. I actually... While I was watching this, I had to pause the video and just take a few breaths. Oh wow! And it hit me as I was do- and I and it hit me while I was doing that. I was like, "Wow!" For a lot of people, this might be a non thing, but if you were watching that terrible day, it it sticks with you. Mm. So yeah, that was a really really bad moment. And blowing up a city for entertainment or shock value. Well, what are some movies that have done that? Man of Steel, G.I. Joe. Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> Funny thing, Godzilla was before 9-11, I remember right? But Godzilla really represented it as a tragedy. It really got down on the human level. I mean, in the original Godzilla, there's this there's this heartbreaking scene of a mother comforting her three children, saying, we'll be with your father soon. And it's a human element. It's, you get the impression of the tragedy, and you see the aftermath and the rebuilding. They're treating this as a legitimate tragedy. Man of Steel, uh, G.I. Joe, and now Miraculous are treating it either as, oh, wow, isn't this a cool, shocking scene? Or, hey, isn't this a funny joke? It's a sad statement when the guy in a lizard costume treats this uh, destruction of a city with more reverence than than human actors. I I guess what what you're saying here is it's just a tone of the scenario i mean uh, with what avengers did it too the first avengers and yeah I- i'm guessing it's the tone the reasoning and so on funny enough avengers seem to actually have less destruction to this if i'm not mistaken usually marvel movies they try to minimize the damage as much as possible which is kind of weird 
you think they'd go for a spectacle is they are, well, maybe it's because they too understand there's a certain reverence to it. New York gets attacked. Okay, it's it's a major population center. It makes sense that unfortunately that puts a bullseye on it in a sense. But they don't casually destroy the city. Yeah, I mean, you see heroes don't <laughs> go out of their way to fly into buildings. Oh, but oh, but they they're perfectly happy to punch the the villains through it. Both DC and Majestic here. Were you going to fix all those holes in the in the building? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's the thing. That's, that's why I said that uh, DC hero movies and DC comics usually level a city without any uh, <laughs> without any hesitation, while Marvel tries to at least control their mayhem. I mean, we played uh, the Sony PlayStation 4 uh, Spider-Man, right? And over there, there was a, a sky crane, uh, just a crane on a building that got dislodged and almost fell to the ground. But hey, our, our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man saved the day. And that there was kind of tragical if it hit the ground. Which is why Spider-Man caught it with... A heck of a lot of webbing. Spoilers. I mean, come on, that's obvious. Uh, but yeah, I, I do see your point here, Silver. And yeah, I mean, it's one of those scenarios where it's based on where you're from, what's your views on set matter and so on. I mean, it, the, the tragedy was a tragic moment in human history. And I remember the day that I was witness to said tragedy um i was at my i was at home uh grandpa called us to check the news we did and he told us that hey the first uh there was a plane crash and it crashed into the twin towers and then while that was going on on cnn the second plane crashed oh that, that was really tragical i mean it's one of those things that you can't really get out of your mind if I'm not mistaken, it happened on a Wednesday? Oh, sorry, um, Tuesday probably for you guys? Yes, I think it was a Tuesday. So, yeah, I, c- certain scenarios, certain things I remember because, hey, they're, they're, we, we were eating stuff at a night market and so on. I mean, yeah, it's tragical. It's it, it's etching to your mind that you can't really forget. Like, minute details of that day kind of burn into your memory and stuff. Well, I, I should also point out uh, the term is tragic. Uh, I get which why you say tragical, but that it's tragic. Oh, sorry. Tragic, all right. But anyway, I have really gotten on my soapbox with this, but I guess it's also a bit awkward as they're talking about French-American friendship. And just like uh, what you just did was not very friendly. Yeah, but... <laughs> Uh, I, I, see, I see what you mean. And after said tragedy, we, we are introduced to the president with their uh, with her guns. <laughs> yeah, wh- where the hell are these coming from? Where was this in the budget? God, Fr- France makes garbage dumpsters that go up into space, and we load missile launchers on every rooftop? The hell? If that isn't a commentary on American military spending, I don't know what is. I, I don't know, man. Like, when, I, when I saw this, I'm like, hmm. They're, they're trying to say something. Yeah, damn. Yep. Oh, yep, yep. But still, oh, man. It's one of those things where this is very interesting. <laughs> oh, just funny. That's one way to put it. Yeah, it, it it's, it's, it's up... <laughs> It's told for laughs, but at the same time, too, just a few seconds ago, buildings were destroyed. Ha ha! Now they've got a missile in New York Bay. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but anywho, let's carry on. Oh, boys. So we, we see the heroes doing what their hearts desires, robbing places, being slacking off, and so on. So the younger superheroes decide that yo uh since the adults are dumb uh let's help the city and stuff okay let's do this so 
Uncanny Valley says, okay, I I I know who the what you want to call this um French heroes are. I'll go get them and we can save the day. So you try and survive, okay? So she does and well this is pretty interesting by the way. Uh, we see that a human let's just say sparrow. Sparrow here has no power, so there's no that thing. And she is holding her own against superpower heroes. So that's still cool. That's still cool. So Uncanny Valley meets up with uh, Ladybug and gets her to, well, suit up and save the day. She, Marriott gives the ring to Uncanny Valley to give to Adrian and he suits up and becomes Cat Noir again because he hears a recording of Marinette saying that she couldn't do this without him. Okay. Just for a couple already. Oh, actually, I've got to say, uh, Uncanny Valley is quickly becoming personal in- invasion, <laughs> home surveillance. She, no one can keep a secret identity from me. <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> oh, you recorded someone without their permission. Wow. You are just everything the CIA is accused of, aren't you? Silver, Silver. CIA, FBI, Apple, Facebook. <laughs> I mean, it's like, oh, but it's all to protect our freedom. Yeah, I am getting really political. This <laughs> car- this cartoon is bringing out just the the vitriol in me at this point. Just a few weeks away, man. Just a few weeks away. Okay, so in the next scene, Spare's going to die because missiles. Why not, right? Uh, and Ladybug saves a Sparrow from missiles. In the back alley, and Cat Noir's there. So they do hug it out and pound it. <laughs> oh boy, that's still awkward. I know. So, anyway, Hawkmoth says if you don't give me your miracles, I'm going to shoot this missile into the moon or Paris, and it'll start a war. It's all on you. I gotta ask. Is this really going to be on them if they couldn't fix this? Uh, what, what do you think, Silver? It might have been on them if he hadn't broadcast that message to every monitor and television in the city where he says, Hey, I'm Hawkmoth and I'm the one who's going to do this. I know, right? Okay, I, I will never underestimate people's ability to spin uh, an event and make it someone else's fault. But... Shouldn't he be public enemy number one for launching that missile? I know, right? It's like it's like blaming blaming GI Joe for Cobra's the uh, evil doings. That's just dumb. Yeah, so I mean, you still don't want a missile to get launched or someone to uh, someone to react in without knowing the full situation. True, but still, just dumb. Yep, I, I totally agree on that one. But anywho, we're talking about that. Uh, should I pause here or carry on? Because there's an interesting scene coming up. You know what? I'm going to carry on. So, with the group huddled up, trying to find a plan, uh, Marina activates her ladybug powers to discover, hey, I got a keychain. What does this do? Um, well, I got no idea. Okay, um, let's try and find a plan. So... This is the part where I mentioned that, yo, this is logical, I like this plan, and it works really well. It works to it works all together. That's awesome. What do you think about this one, Silver? Like, does it make sense for you? Well, let's see here. A keychain. Yeah, in this case, because they established elements beforehand during the tour, I have no idea if any of this is true. I mean there's, I don't even know the internal structure of the Statue of Liberty, having never ascended it. But at least they established this idea beforehand, so at least th- there's a Chekhov's gun. Think about how many Chekhov's guns have failed to go off this this time. Oh, there's a lot. I mean, that that yeah. teacher, remember, I mean, like I set her up, <laughs> that didn't go nowhere. That went nowhere. The boy who's interested in Chloe's assistant went nowhere. Uh, the idea of meeting American superheroes went nowhere. It all, there's so many ideas that just die in the void <laughs> in this bird. Okay, so here I am still 
getting all cheesed. Yeah. But but still, uh, I do like the setup here because when I guess a keychain, what's the keychain for? Okay, robot, you you can you um give me a blueprint structure of the uh, no the Statue of Liberty. Oh, okay, it has a pathway to go. Okay. Oh wait, did the teacher Mr. Doorman? Okay, let's use his greed for stuff. Okay, they use it and it's really interesting. So yay, this is smart. This is a smart plan. The audience at home gets what Marinette is trying to do. Awesome. This is the first time I think that we get in on the plan. Yay. So with that, we head to Eiffel Tower where um missiles are being shot at our heroes. Oh cool. All part of our defense budgets, apparently. <laughs> uh, boys. But anywho, um, it seems that Marinette on a ladybug and Cat Noir goes to the top of the Eiffel Tower to uh, get the necklace of out of Techno Pirate, and now he's just normal Techno Pirate, and he's just like, "Arr, what be happening?" Yeah. But anywho. I gotta compliment him on his devotion to character. I mean, he's a techno pirate. He went the full national talk like a pirate day. <laughs> yeah, but uh, be- besides that, um, Ladybug gives Sparrow the necklace, and now mm, Sparrow is eagle now. So yay, she transforms, and we got this <laughs> what. Uh, <laughs> uh, remember when I mentioned? <laughs> Certain characters, certain ethnicity in the show, just being troped and whatnot, just to be a token character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have a quote unquote Native American girl getting the Eagle Reckless. Yep. It's like the Black Ranger from the original Mighty Morphin. <laughs> it's a totally coincidence, right? <laughs> well,. According to interviews with the guys who first made Power Rangers, they were so unconscious about it that, yeah, when someone pointed out, it's like, oh, God, what have we done? Oh, did she, oh I, I also heard that the uh, in the pilot when the original Red Ranger was Native American. <laughs> well, in fact, uh, Tommy, who would become a Red Ranger, he was. they really tried to overemphasize his his. Native American heritage. Really? Is he? Okay. Is Oh, in the show. Just for a little in bit. In the show, right? Just for a little bit. Uh, okay. Yes. But in real life, he's... I don't know. Him. In real life, I have no idea. All right. I saw that and I was just like, wow, guys. Well, you know, it's kind of funny. If someone's like, oh, my God, I, I didn't even realize. I can, I can understand an unconscious decision. I mean, sorry. Hell, you know what? After, after all my ranting... If the miraculous ladybug producer said, "Oh God, we didn't even think about that. We're so sorry," I'd let it go at that point. If it were just, "Oh wow, I had a moment of blind spot in a in a hectic production," you know what? Okay, I I can appreciate that happens. Though, <laughs> given what uh, Master, when Master Live clued us into a thread where he was talking about the the miraculous swap episode mm. i don't know if he i don't know if that they'd ever really apologize <laughs> i don't know man uh it, it feels like he won't it, it's his artistic vision and whatnot so let's just let's just accept and move on giving her this costume this this outfit this powers you know, in this one, I got mad before because I lived through 9-11. I have some first-hand experience. I would need someone who was of a, an American tribe, Arapaho, Apache, mm-hmm. someone. I need their feedback. Are they really okay with this? You know what? Representation. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. I don't know. It's one of those things where they're getting represented in a way, and it's not malicious, so probably it's good. It's okay. And it's just a few seconds, so it doesn't really hurt that much. Yeah, feels kind of nothing. So who who <laughs> yeah. knows? Feels like you're you're taking a gamble at the very yeah. least. Hey, at least representation in a what's it called this cartoon is always good. Uh, you know what? Let's move on. So yeah, she is now eagle. So she resets all the heroes back to normal, 
and the hero save the day. But uh, Hawkmoth tells Techno Pirate to launch the missile, and he does. And this scene here is amazing. I love this scene. I love this shot. Where Majestic's like, was I just moving the moon? Oh, hi, missile. <laughs> and it's like, oh, hello, missile. Now let me swing you into the sun. Oh, hello, Meteor Man. Oh, hello, Solar Man. That'd be great. Look at another superhero's just on his way back from fixing the sun. <laughs> oh, here's that missile. Oh, God! <laughs> Am I right calling him Solar Man? Like, you remember Superman 4, was it? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, I never saw <laughs> Superman 4. I don't know it only by reputation. <laughs> you should watch it, man. It's so dumb. Whew. Okay, um, so I'm going to speed things up because, yay, um, Techno Pirate gets beaten up by kids and the day is saved once again by Ladybug. And Eagle here wants to give back the necklace to Ladybug, but Ladybug says keep it, it's in good hands. And with that, the heroes there tells the, well... They tell the history of um, owl, night night owl. Like uh, usually, they're guys, but now uh, it's been taken over by a girl, and I don't know if that really matters or not. Uh, does it? Equality, uh, representation, progressivism. Uh, it's not honestly. It's not a bad thing. I mean, I appreciate it. It looked like that. At least the legacy of these characters was not limited to any ethnicity or or social status which is itself a positive my question is they're like okay now that you're in that costume they'll know everyone will know how many people saw him transform saw her transform uh yeah i know right uh, why are you declaring it's got to be over couldn't you take another young protege under your wing yeah thing? i mean like what batman has how many robins now five well, I lost another Robin. Added to the pile. <laughs> yeah. I'm such a good mentor. Because I'm Batman. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Look at Tim Drake. He's here. He's, he's doing well, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's Jason Todd. Yeah. Jason. Jason's awesome. Well, I'm oh, sorry. I, I was thinking of uh, Tim from the animated ah, series. He's Batman. Yeah. Batman. See, he's doing good, too. So there's no, there's nothing wrong. Uh, Batman. <laughs> so anywho... Um, I'm fast forwarding because yay, the day is safe once again by Ladybug and whatnot. And Hogwarts says, "Oh, this is cool. Now that I know that miraculous are around the world, I can go hunt for more." Yay! So we group up with the heroes. Um, Uncanny Valley says to the guys, "Once you go back, I'm going to delete memory of your secret identities." P.S. No, I have backups. Lol. Yeah. You're part of the National Registry of Superheroes now. Sorry. Yep. So, anywho, in Paris, um, Chloe's dad do stuff because uh, he's rebuilding Paris after the disaster that happened. Uh, the people of Paris are wondering why the Lady Bay and Cat Noir are not there. No, because they're in America helping the American superheroes do their job. Because look at us French superheroes. We're awesome and you need our help. Ha <laughs> ha. Dumb. Honestly, if I were a French uh, citizen and you know my my neighborhood got torn up, it's like, wait a minute, why were they over in America? Because they've got um, they've got American heroes leaking out their ears. <laughs> we only got you two. What the hey? <laughs> I don't know, man. They should should it be, uh, you know I don't care anymore. So anyway, after the day save, uh, we head back to well. New York again because it seems that uh, there is a creepy old man trying to steal the eagle miraculous from Eagle. And she goes up to him and says, Nah, man, like, shouldn't we build our own American branch of the miraculous? And the creepy old guy smiles in a creepy way. I'm scared, Silver. I need an adult. Isn't that Master What's his face? Oh no, he's. Um, I'm trying to figure out: is he Native American? Is he Incan? The other guy is Asian and short. Well, I'm afraid you're asking the wrong guy. I don't. I don't know all. Let me try and find 
Uh, Master Fu, yes. Remember Master Fu, Silver? No, I've never seen Master oh, Fu. Oh, you've seen him around. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm just going to post it in the Discord. There you go. Oh, the the guy with the Hawaiian Yeah, shirt. him. So, yeah. The t- Turtle Miraculous? He, he, he had the Turtle Miraculous before. Huh. Well, I gotta be honest, I, I don't remember seeing him in an episode. Maybe we didn't cover... Uh, you know, I don't care. So anyway, with that, episode ends. Yay! Special's over! Uh, and with that, Silver, wow, let's go to final thoughts. Uh, so what do you think, man? What do you think of this special? For the first half, I was just getting bored with the whole will-they-won't-they they romantic subplot. Then there's the idea of the superhero... French and American superheroes meeting and exchanging ideas. That intrigued me. But then they started trying to be silly, and in doing so, they actually hit below the belt uh, in my eyes. Really tone deaf. And so, guys, I, I, here's the thing. I've been witnessing Miraculous in, in parts. There are probably bunches of things that I just don't know about in it. But th- With this smattering we've had, this sample, I really don't enjoy this show. I can't anymore. Because they just get so weird or tone deaf. And I'm just like... Okay, a faithful viewing might uh, smooth things over. But I'm not in the... I'm not enticed to keep watching. Mm. I feel like it's kind of my fault that this happens because... I feel like most of the time I'm aiming for ridiculous and zany episodes where I try to get a rise out of you. Well, you've succeeded. (laughs) But at at the same time too, the more I think about it, is there any normal episodes that kind of go with the flow? I mean, there's one I can think of right now and that's the Chloe subplot. But that's what, almost three episodes or maybe five episodes in total just to get the storyline? And meanwhile, I've also just got a rail on Torterra for not being here. It's like, I had to suffer through this, you had to suffer through this. Oh, he, he watched it, I guess. I hope he watched it. We can ask him. Torterra, you're driving me. We can ask him later. But uh, anything ah. else, man? What can I say? I mean, there is there is humor to it, especially the idea that super American superheroes are so abundant they can cover the mundane. <laughs> yep. But so I'm not going to say that every joke fell flat for me. If you enjoy Ladybug, more power to you. I'm not trying to dissuade you from being a fan. But I guess there's a way to introduce someone to a show. And depending on how well that goes, they'll open themselves to seeing more or close themselves mm-hmm. off. From the moment Tiki uh, flew on screen in the moment, and I was just like, what the hell is that thing? Oh my god, what? Why is this kid dressed in leather? Oh, don't press yourself up against the glass! <laughs> oh god, yeah. I've had a wild ride with Miraculous. It's, it's, an, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. Ugh. So, yes, and this has made me realize just how tired I am of people trying to destroy a city for shock or drama. And yet I appreciate Marvel for actually being surprisingly conservative mm-hmm. even in the midst of an alien invasion. They're trying. They are. So, uh, you're done, Silver? Oh, I'm done. All right. I'm done with this miraculous ladybug. I tell you what. All right. So, anyway, as for me, this episode or this special is... It's interesting. I I find it... How do I put this? It answers a lot of questions for people who watch these series. Yet, it also raises a lot of questions at the same time. Because, well, oh god, well, one of the few things that happened when you were not paying attention to it is that Master Fu, he lost his memory and forgot who is everyone and gave the responsibility of Guardian to Ladybug. So the responsibility of a guardian is to keep tabs on where the hell is your miraculous are and also finding proper 
wielders of the miraculous items. So, have you noticed anything out of the ordinary or something strange about this? Everything about this is strange in my eyes. Okay, I'll just point you in the direction. Uh, Marinette needs to know who is who with their miraculous. And it's interesting that Marinette doesn't know who Cat Noir is. Well, at this point, they're honestly, I'm surprised neither of them said, Hey, wait, you were in New York. My class was in New York. Wait, you were in, you're here in New York, even though you said you wouldn't be in New York. You'd be staying. And Adrian thought he'd be staying. Oh my God, really? <laughs> no, nah, man. Could it be? <laughs> no, nah, man. Like, the most obvious one was the Christmas special. <laughs> Remember that one? Where she's standing next to a cutout yep. of herself. If that doesn't tip yep. him off, nothing will. But no, um, the, the special was interesting, but it's marked with a lot of meddling. Uh, if I remember right, uh, the director, Thomas something, wanted this to be a full-fledged movie, an hour and 30 minutes and whatnot, but it got turned into a TV special instead. So that's why we get to see threads that be that kind of develop at the very beginning, but drop off later on because lack of time, budget and whatnot. And it feels like this special had potential, but it was wasted on one joke. So, yeah, it's, eh, it's done, I guess. But eh, it's done. <laughs> Finito. Yeah. Would we review this in the future? Probably. Maybe. I, I, I can promise because... We'll we'll see. I mean, it'll have to be a really good one for us to really go into it again. Would you agree, Silver? Mm, yes. But as for now, um, what are we going to do next week, man? Well, I think we need a healthy dose of pony again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're going to take a look at IDW's French Miss Magic issue 83 with Sherlock Twilight. Ah, that will be fun. I, I can't wait. So, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at emissiongmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at Emilia Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Roman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Oh, find me lots of places. On both uh, Twitter and DeviantArt, just find me under MLP Silver Quill. You can support my videos and comics through Patreon or Ko-fi, both under Silver Quill. A search on YouTube for Silver Quill and After the Fact shall turn me up. That sounds <laughs> oh interesting. And uh, every when on Wednesdays, I post comic reviews on Equestria Daily. Awesome, guys. Go check his work out because it's always fun to read. And Silver posts updates on things that you wouldn't know, especially the comic book panel, the, the four coma style comics where you announced a new episode or something like that? Yeah. yeah. My Pinkie Pie says goodnight. Yeah, I, I forgot the proper phrasing, but yes, Pinkie Pie says goodnight. Those are in window to what is coming up next for the pony thing. Like, what was this week again, Silver? I, I didn't get a chance to read. Well, this week was a sugar embellishment. She tries to spice up her how she first met Big Macintosh. Uh, and this one is related to what now? Oh, well, it's not necessarily related to the uh, episodes. Uh, apparently, uh, Discovery Family is marathoning uh, Pony Life. So there's like four episodes, which granted only amounts to about, <laughs> what, an yep. hour? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but they go through mm -hmm. a lot. They're going to blaze through this series faster than you can imagine. Oh, yeah. And season two is on the way. Oh, God. Surprise. <sighs> So, anywho, um, go check his work out. Uh, follow YouTube, Facebook. No, you don't have a Facebook. Uh, YouTube, DeviantArt, and also Patreon and Kofi. Yeah, go go follow him there, guys. So, anyway, uh, also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, 
I still have a leg and Tristan, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am the Silver Queen. And we'll catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. So, what superpowers do you have if you get a chance to have any? I've always loved the idea of teleporting. Cuts down the commute everywhere. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. You win on that one, my friend. You win on that one. When we get the convention scene back, we'll be able to just teleport there. Yeah, you know what? Okay, you know what? To be honest, I would like to have Doorman's power. Which is itself a form of teleportation. True. Uh, limited to doors, but still, that's awesome. Like, sure. just imagine. Ah, oh, Silver, uh, I'm going to come for a bit. You got space time. Okay, let's do this. Norman, why are you coming in the bathroom? I'm sorry, I, I didn't know the layout. Wow. No, but seriously, Norman's phone is awesome. Hey, nice.